what are some best responses to, why are you so quiet? I have trouble controlling the volume of my voice. I say I'm tired. I'm never quiet when I'm actually tired but people seem to understand that excuse and leave me alone about it. I usually only say one line per episode. Quote. Sorry. I don't speak any English. Edit. Thank you all for writing it in your language. A friendly stranger once said this to me in a different context. Perfect American English Midwest accent and it has been on my mind for a long time lol. I was raised by abusive librarians. I just don't talk much, has always been my go-to. You don't really owe anyone conversation beyond a greeting if you're feeling polite. Much less an explanation of your personality. Serious. Who would you name as the most evil human alive on earth today? Attention. Serious. Tag notice. Asterisk. Jokes. Puns. And off-topic comments are not permitted. HTTPS. www.reddit.com slash r slash askreddit slash wiki slash index hash wiki underscore dash rule underscore six dash. In asterisk any asterisk comment. Parent or child. Asterisk parent comments that aren't from the target group will be removed. Along with their child replies. Asterisk report comments that violate these rules. Posts that have few relevant answers within the first hour. And posts that are not appropriate for the serious tag will be removed. Consider doing an AMA request instead. Thanks for your cooperation and enjoy the discussion. I am a bot. And this action was performed automatically. Please. Contact the moderators of this subreddit. Message. Compose. To equals. R. Ask credit. If you have any questions or concerns. Removed. Probably certain cartel members. Raping children and cutting their faces off is as bad as it gets. Shelley Notick. HTTPS. All that's interesting.com slash Shelly dash Notic. I think she just got out of jail. Not just her, but collectively all the people like her. She was responsible for torturing two adults to death, killing the boy under her guardianship, torturing both her daughters. If you can stomach it, it's detailed in the book. If you tell asterisk, edit, pointed out that it's this summer she gets out. Peter Scully. Dude made and distributed snuff films with toddlers. There are petitions for the Philippines to bring back the death penalty just for him. And I fully support that. Edit. For all the sticklers and hair splitters. Not technically snuff films because no one died on film but the remains of human children were found on his property and some of the children in the CP he made died of their injuries afterward. Geez. Matthew Israel. Creator of the Judge Rotenberg Center. Look it. And him. Up. It's horrifying and for some reason not well known. What is a song you consider a masterpiece? I'll throw in high hopes. The division bell is so underrated. Floyd showing up in this list more than anybody else so far. And it's so true. Claire de Lune. Debussy no doubt. A day in the life. The me channel theme. Asterisk all along the watchtower asterisk Jimi Hendrix version. Take 5. Dave Brubeck. Redditors who have a ring doorbell. What's the creepiest thing you have caught on it? Had mine detect the sound of someone screaming bloody murder in the middle of the night. Was only like two seconds then stopped and didn't happen again. Then there was the time there was a shootout across the street and it picked up the sound's gunshots. I could hear the crack of the bullets on the opposite side of the house. But sadly not on camera. Not super creepy, but there is a guy that pets my plants sometimes. Dude crouching behind my car while me and my mom got out crept up right behind it and we didn't even notice. His face was covered. 
didn't see until a day or two later watching random clips. At five-ish in the morning. Sun was just starting to come up and it's the middle of winter. My husband half asleep answers the doorbell on his phone in bed next to me. It's a toddler wearing nothing but a PJ top and underwear. Husband says, hello? Toddler says, can. My son's name. Come out to play? Husband still half asleep says, not right now maybe later. About three minutes later husband suddenly sits up as the reality of the situation dawns on him and he rushes out of the house to track down a wandering toddler walking barefoot in the streets in freezing weather. Turns out my son's toddler friend from daycare who's been to our house once for a playdate just walked straight out his front door undetected and memorized the route to our house. For me it was the possibility of his little journey ending very differently than it did in a number of terrifying scenarios that still haunts me. Not really creepy but there's a serial gnomer in my neighborhood being caught on doorbell cameras. She's dropping off gnomes on the unsuspected and walks away. A chemical plant blew up a few miles from my house and you could hear the a distant explosion in. See an orange glow on mine. What is the best method to actually grow as a person? To learn how to think more logically, clearly, and humanely? Learn to live without instant gratification. Don't think of how a decision will affect you now. But think of how it will affect you tomorrow, next week, or a year from now. You see a lot of knee-jerk reactions to events and choices that sound logical now, but have ill effects long-term. Once you learn to give up on that feeling and think about the long-term effects, you can start to act much more rationally and purposefully. Accepting that you don't know everything. People have this perception that just because they've heard of it, they know all about it. You don't. You know what you know because of your own personal experiences. Stop pretending you've done these things and go do them. The world is truly yours if you want it to be. Sure, there's limits and challenges along the way. But that's part of the growth. But the first thing to do is accept that you aren't the be-all master of everything you've ever heard of. I'm biased. But I think trying to have a scientific mind. I'm not saying everything has to be broken into science. But the mind of a scientist is supposed to be open to new ideas. But skeptical. Question everything. Even stuff you already know and believe to be true. Along with that. Be willing and excited to be wrong. Then accept it. And move on. Do things to be wrong. Because it primes you for being right and appreciating the feeling of it more as well as the pursuit. 2 plus 2 equals 5 is not right. But it helps you understand how 2 plus 2 equals 4 is correct in a more cohesive way than to just say the latter. You also should find ways to abstract topics and ideas. So when you're presented with something like the previous paragraph, you can find ways to apply that to other things. I also found that getting into an exercise routine that you work to improve every session will have profound effects on your mind and perception, not just your body. I began looking at all problems as smaller incremental steps to an end goal once I started strength training. Every representative and increase in weight was a gain. But even when I couldn't do the same thing I did last week, and I felt like I failed, I realized I only failed because I was trying, and trying my best that's still an improvement. I found this mentality could be applied to just about everything. It's almost hard for me to explain it because it's just so natural to me at this point that I don't really remember how I used to view the world before I started it. It was as big of an impact on me as realizing the immensity of space. I don't fully grasp the concept, but realizing that I'll never truly be able to, in and of itself, is the same thing as the concept of a near-infinite universe. It's weird. All of these things, and subsequent things I've come to realize have just made me a better, more rounded, 
and humane person. And it continues to do so. Also appreciating art, music. For what it is. Rather than hating music or art that doesn't fit what I like. Has changed my mind. Realize your reality is based on your perception of space. And how you choose to view your surroundings and events and experiences are that perception. If you only look for and discuss negative things. And ignore positive stuff. You're going to live in a negative world. That's not to say negative thoughts are bad. But you only need a few small holes to drain something. Even if you needed a big hole to fill it. Expand your knowledge and your experiences. Do new stuff a lot. Keep educating yourself every day. Read a lot. Travel. Talk to people. Approach new or seemingly nonsensical information by trying to understand why they might be right. Rather than looking for the first minor detail allowing you to dismiss them wholesale. Also realize that everything you know to be true is bullshit to some degree. Literally everything. Because everything is a social construct. But especially examine those parts where those truths become prescriptive and are used to police and control people's lives. Subscribe, my brothers.